very soon. That's right. And in our lifetime. The Bible tells us this time and time again. But how do we know this? What are some of the, the ways that we can tell? What are some of the indicators? Then we need up 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. Verses 1 to 5. And as I said, I quote a lot of scripture. I love scripture and I love to quote it. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And you're going to get a lot of scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5. That's right. Yeah. Which reads as follows. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, right. truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof That's right. from such turn away. Look at that list of the type of men that we're going to see in these perilous last days. Every single day I see this list fulfilled. Not just in the news or on the TV, but I see it right in front of my eyes. When I'm walking in the streets, when I'm at work, everywhere, I see this list being fulfilled. Right. And it's worth noting here as well, that all the other so-called Bibles out there, the New International Version, the New King James, which is the King James, Good News Translation, the Bad News Translation, you know what I mean? We wrote this list by changing important description. That's right. That's right. I'll well, give you some examples. Yes. They change covetous to just lovers of money. Mm. Completely different. They completely remove blasphemy. Mm. And they remove as well without natural affection. Mm. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Stick with the King James Bible. Amen. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. Preserved. Praise the Lord. perfect word of God. Amen. Except no imitation, except no substitute. Amen, amen. Now you've no doubt heard, I'm sure you've heard here, uh, back in July about the uh, Malaysian Airlines disaster, MH17, the plane that was shot down over the eastern Ukraine near the Russian border. And tragically, three Filipinos were killed on that, mm. in that disaster. I thought about it a lot when it was on the news. And 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5, is a good list to check against anything we see in the news. So if you're reading a news article, Get out those verses and look and see if you see. And you know, when I looked at this, this air disaster, I saw that there were fierce men in control of the crash site. Unholy treatment of the bodies, you know? You know, there were looters roaming around, taking the phones and the, the makeup and the toys, coveting after them. And this is just one example of many I give you. You can turn on the news and see anything, and go through this list and see this list being fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, we are in these perilous times. That's right, amen. Amen. And any safe Bible believing Christian can tell that. That's right. But surely things aren't as bad as this. Surely they're getting better, right? Mm. Check with uh, check with me on this one. 2 Timothy 3. So just a little, a little weird thing. 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. And it says here in the Word of God, the King James Bible, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, mm. deceiving and being deceived. That's right. Is it really getting better? Is the world uh, becoming a safer place? No. Mm. It's getting worse and worse. Every that's right. Day. That's right. Yeah. You know, when I was unsafe, when I, you know, when I was just lost, even I could tell that it was getting worse. Each generation that comes, they complain and say that things are worse now than they, they were before. None of them ever say it's better, if you notice know, that. None of the older generations say, yeah, things are great now. Things are worse. That question. Today, is, everyone is fearful, paranoid, and worried. And there's a standard acceptability to a criminal activity. Mm. The world has become a much more dangerous, wicked, and intolerant place. For example, and I don't know if you heard about it here in the Philippines as well. Over in the UK last year, there were two men that beheaded mm. another man on the streets of the capital. Two Muslim men. Mm. And they cut his head off and did it in broad daylight on a street in London. Evil men waxing worse and worse. Right, man. In the Philippines last year, you had the Priority Development Assistance Fund, or Pork Barrel Scam. This saw some 10 billion pesos defrauded from the government, taken from the hands of Filipinos. Mm -hmm. 
seducers waxing worse and worse, do you know? That's right. And what else do we find in the scriptures? Tell me the 2 Peter, chapter 3, please. Verses 3 to 10. And I'm just trying to build up a picture here for you. 2 Peter, chapter 3. Verses 3 to 10. That's right, amen. You can say that with every verse, right? Yes, amen. So 2 Peter 3, verses 3 to 10. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? That's right. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Amen. As That's some right. men count slackness. Right. But is long suffering to us with, not willing that any should perish. That's any. Right. Amen. But that Amen. all should come to repentance. That's right. Amen. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, right. in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Ignorant men, ignorant of the word of God, the King James Bible, Amen. scoffing and laughing right. at the return of the Lord, and walking after their own lusts. Yet the Lord is returning. And how so? He will come as a thief in the night. When it's least expected. That's right. You know, in our church in, in the UK, where, where I come from, we sing a wonderful hymn, I'm sure it's in your book actually. And uh, it says it could happen in a moment. That's it's right. Between the evening and the night. Isn't that, so, isn't that so true? And isn't that exciting for us? <laughs> but I want to ask all of you now what if the, what if the rapture happens right now? Mm. What if it happens tomorrow, or next week, or next month? Sapatnava, and Ginagawa Nasty, Habang, and Vito Tai. That's right. Good question. Ginagamitha Nasty, and Warash Nasty, Habang, and Bubuhai, and Tayo. That's right. Turn with you to 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 to 9. Tama. Amen. Tama, Tama, Po. 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. And this is how I know this, because I read the Word of God. Yeah. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 9, reads as follows. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. That's right. The Lord is returning, and at any moment. That's right. Amen. And if you are saved, you will avoid his wrath being poured out on this earth, on them that know not God, That's right. and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't want anyone to be here when that happens. You know, nobody. But there is hope still. Perhaps a little time we could all be raptured right now. Mm. But if the Lord tarries, we have time still. Sorry, amen. And this is why we are so desperate to warn people as Christians. So we be the tightest two, please. Verses 11 to 13. Try. And all of these verses are just, they really excite me. And I really love them. Titus 2, verses 11 to 13. Read as follows. For the grace of for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope 
and the glory of the of the great God, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And He's made a way for us to be reconciled to Him, you know, so that we don't have to go through this this awful event called the tribulation, it's known as the tribulation. Salvation would be virtually impossible during this period of time. You can do it, you can get saved during the tribulation, but it's so difficult. Mm, that's right. It's going to be impossible to maintain. Mm. And why would you want to take a chance like that? When salvation is so easy now, here and now. That's right. It isn't any easier for us. Mm. But yet a selfish, prideful self-righteousness gets in the way every time. If you go after Jesus Christ instead of they prefer to follow the traditions of men and the rudiments of the world. Mm. And it confuses me why anybody willingly ignore the free gift of salvation offered by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The simplicity of which is perfectly demonstrated in Ephesians 2 8 to 9, which says, For by grace are you saved, through faith, yeah. and then not of yourselves. Yeah. It is the gift of God, Amen. not of works, lest any man should boast. Mm. And I love those verses. Right, because amen. they destroy every other book's religion out there. That's right. And it's so easy to get saved. Yet most people are blind, deaf and dumb, asleep at the wheel as they speed off towards the cliff, having convinced themselves that there's no hell, that they can somehow burn their way into heaven, that they can somehow reason or argue with the Lord about their sin. So I wanted to set the scene first. That the rapture is coming soon. That's right. And that every day around the world, tens of thousands of men and women are just marching straight to hell mm. without the Lord Jesus. That's right. And that's what I wanted to do. It's all awesome today. That time is critically short. We are most assuredly in these last days. And I, I personally believe that we're the last generation. That's what I believe. So I believe the scripture confirms that. I don't know how much it can carry on. When you look at the world and the news and what's going on, I don't know how we can carry on like this. I really don't. Satatava and Ginagawa Nati Me. That's right. Ginagawa Nati Me. That's right. And Ginagawa Nati Me. That's right. You know, it's not easy to preach. It's very difficult for me up here. It's not easy to preach. It's not easy to witness. That's right. Or share the gospel. It's not easy. It takes courage. Nobody said it would be easy. I still remember that first tract I left somewhere, like I was a thief or something, just quickly leaving on the table and then running somewhere. I still remember the first tract I gave to somebody. I had to really pluck up the courage, just give them the tract. I still remember the first time that I uh, posted a video on YouTube where I had like a, a small ministry on there, just pressing that upload button for the first time took a lot of courage. The first time I gave my testimony it was very difficult. The first time I preached was difficult, so. It takes motivation and confidence. And we've talked about some pretty strong motivations, right? The rapture and millions of people die. That's, right. That's our motivation. But how can we build up our confidence? And this is how I look at the challenge you guys here today. How can we build up our confidence to start doing more for the Lord? Yeah. Then we we'll do Psalm 119, verse 105, and I'm sure most of you probably know this one. Psalm 119, 105. And Psalm 119 is brilliant from start to finish anyway. 105 reads as follows. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is our strongest source of confidence. Amen. In the Bible. Amen. And you need to read, study, love, trust and believe in King James Bible. I can't stress this enough to you. My book with the Lord exploded into life when I got this book. Amen, amen, amen. When I read it, when I studied it, when I came to love, trust and believe in it completely. Before I got this book, I was saved. No doubt, I was saved. But I was wondering where I'm in no direction at all. All these multiple Bible versions telling you different things. I could be used by the Lord. And if you're using any other Bible than the King James Bible, you can't be used. The Lord will not use you. He will not bless you what you do. Because if you don't read, study, love, trust and believe in His words, how can He use you? That's right. If you doubt His words, That's right. if you're going to the footnotes, mm. if That's you're right. ignoring the fact that there's a verse missing, 
What does that say about your love for Jesus Christ? That's right. That's not That's right. right. He said he would preserve his words. Mm. And he did. Amen. Which leads us nearly on to the next one. Go to Romans 12, please. Romans 12, verses 4 to 8. Romans 12, verses 4 to 8. It reads as follows. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy that is prophesied according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. I urge you all to pray to the Lord for your leading. What calling he will give you. And do it. Don't be like Jonah and run away. Respond to it and do it. Percy speaking last year, I prayed hard and often to the Lord that I could find some meaningful way to serve Him in a way that would make use of my abilities, my skills, for His glory. And you know now, and I say this in no glory whatsoever, now I'm able to support churches like this in the Philippines in small ways. Amen. You know, I can just bring some Bibles, I can bring some tracts, I can encourage and have fellowship with fellow Christians. Amen, amen. It's a small thing that I can do, but he's allowed me to do that. Amen. And I have this, this small but fruitful ministry on YouTube where I defend the King James Bible. Amen, amen. And I expose the corruptions of what they are doing, which mm. is destroying Jesus. They destroy his divinity, they take away the blood redemption. That's right. They ruin yeah. everything. Yeah. That's right. And my ministry exposes that. That's right. Amen, amen. Good. Because I love my Savior and I'm dependent. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Praise that, takes God. Us, <laughs> that takes us to our next part as well. Your prayer life. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. It's a short verse. But a powerful verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 17. So 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 11, verse 17, simply says, Pray without ceasing. Right. Hey, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going Can you honestly say, do you pray without ceasing? Can you say that? Do you pray all day, every day? Do you pray even once a day? Once a week, once a month, once in a while. How can you do anything for the Lord if you're not even talking to him? If you don't have that relationship with him, how can you use him? How can you build up your faith? How can you do anything? And if you have difficulty, you're sitting here and you're thinking, I don't pray that often. Can I ask you what the problem is with that? Perhaps you don't know what to say or even how to pray. Maybe you have some difficulty there. Maybe you're a bit shy or nervous about approaching the Lord. That's a good thing to have, that reverence and that fear of the Lord. Perhaps you're ashamed of something, or you're struggling with some sin. I remember when I first started to pray, uh, in the testimony I gave earlier, really clumsy, I thought I had to do the whole kind of, you know, the holy thing and all that sort of stuff. Um, it wasn't frequent, it was every now and again, and the Lord could not use me. I didn't have a relationship with Him. It's like having a father and you don't talk to him. And the difference between me then and me now is, is, is huge, it's massive. I do pray all day, every day, I do. And it's such a blessing to do that, to have that close, personal, intimate relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. You know, even when I'm at work at my desk, I'll pray. Even when I'm about to step into a shop for my grocery, I'll pray. It really makes a huge impact. It really does. So if you have a problem with your prayer life, hopefully make a suggestion there. Talk to those that do have a good prayer life. Ask them. Get some tips and advice. Get some encouragement. Tell them that you're having trouble praying. You're not really sure what to do or, you know? Talk to people. Talk to your brothers and 
because this is in Christ. A strong prayer life should be the cornerstone of your faith. Turn with me to Ephesians 5, verse 16, please. And I've been, I've been really impressed with coming here. This is a church of action, and it's a church of power. But I hope that I'm still challenging you in some areas, in some of my questions. So, Ephesians 5, verse 16, says, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. And these days definitely are evil, but are we actually redeeming our time well? Or are we redeeming it poorly? Perhaps you spend hours and hours watching YouTube, or movies, or the television. You know, we were talking about still no revival. Maybe that's your problem. Maybe you're sitting on Facebook, or Twitter, or Instagram all day. Maybe you're just playing games on the Xbox or PlayStation all day. Maybe you're just relaxing around the house, doing nothing all the time. Just Chilling, right? Chilling, that's the word. Perhaps you are constantly texting on your cell phone. Mm. That's your life. Mm. Maybe that's how you redeem your time. Mm. Maybe you're down at the gym all the time, obsessing over physical activity. Maybe that's what you're doing. And you know, the thing with that is, you, yes, you do need to rest and relax and recharge. We do. Much study wearies the soul. You know, you do need to recharge. But is that what's dominating your Christian life? When the day is over, do you think, I just sat on Facebook all day, or I was down the gym all the time? And if you had to sit down and actually get a spreadsheet perhaps, and this is what I did for the Lord today, that's what I did for myself, you'd probably be shocked, right? You'd probably be shocked. And you probably wouldn't want to share that with anyone. And I'm preaching to myself, by the way. Mm. Oh, I have to redeem the time better. I really that's don't. right, amen. I need to serve the Lord better than I do. I need to raise my day all the time. So let's continue on about redeeming our time. So right. Matthew 10, verse 14, please. Matthew 10, verse 14. So Matthew 10, 14 says, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Ooh. You know, instead of battering against the hardened heart of a close relative or friend that you are desperate to see saved, who constantly rejects the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, go and speak to someone else instead. Someone who will receive and listen to you. That burden to see your loved ones, your best friends, your co-workers, it doesn't fall only on your shoulders. You might, you might just be one of many people who sow a seed, you know? John 4, 37 says, one soweth and another reapeth. Now, I've sowed many times, but I've not reaped. I've reaped sometimes and never sown. Never forget that it's not you who saves, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the problem. We burden ourselves with that desperation to see someone close to us saved. And we can actually do more harm than good sometimes. I've had several difficult conversations with family members and I uh, can honestly say that I've probably done more harm than good sometimes, especially when you start talking about things like hell and judgment, you can sound like a crazy man, that's right. And I understand everybody's frustrations about that. You know, for me personally, I want to see my father saved, I want to see my eldest son saved, I want to see my sister saved. part about that is, I don't actually want to see anyone go to hell. That's right. Not just my father or my sister or my son. Not just a few close friends, my co-workers. I don't want anyone to go to hell. No one. So redeem your time wisely, brothers and sisters. That's right. Shake the, time, shake the dust off your feet and move on. And I, I just ask you here, not to labour with lost family members, friends or co-workers any longer than is productive. Your job may be done when you witness that first time, and then another will come through. If you're only focusing on one family member, or a best friend, and you're ignoring everyone else out there, you need to examine yourself, and your motives. Right. Because what about the homeless man on the street outside? What about the unexpected conversation you have on a deeply one day? Or the stranger you meet at work? 
there are many opportunities to witness and share your faith and how the Lord Jesus Christ saved you. Take advantage of all of them. Don't just go to work and come home and then worry about your mum. Worry about everybody on your journey and all of the people at work. But perhaps it's not easy for you. Perhaps you get nervous or you don't know what to say. Siguro, I can't back you. Turn with me to 2 Timothy 1.7. Timothy 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. It reads as follows. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Amen. 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 And we should be bold and unashamed in our service to the Lord, not given over to the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is nothing more than the fears of, of men, the fears of the world, the fears that they have. So that when we first start stepping out for the Lord, when we first start doing things for the Lord, like I did last year, we start saying things in our minds, you know, what if people laugh at me? Well, what if they say I'm strange or crazy? That's right. What if they say bad words to me, they swear at me, they use profanity, mm. or they blaspheme? Mm. What if they threaten me with violence? What if they tell my friends, family, or co-workers? What if I lose some of my friends? What if I lose all of my friends? I've lost all of my friends, but now I've got so many more friends. Amen, amen, amen. 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 And you know, this is what people start saying. So-called Christians who are afraid to step out. What if this, what if that? Give them over to a spirit of fear. But who cares? Galatians 4.16 says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Amen. You know, I've been called so many things since I became a Christian. But you know, I was only ever called really bad things when I believed this book. Amen. King James Bible. You know, before I got the King James Bible, I was, I was alright. I was a good Christian. People liked me because I did preach against sin. I didn't take a stand, I didn't witness for it, I didn't hold the truth in my hand. But as soon as I got this book, suddenly I'm not nice anymore. Suddenly I'm evil. Suddenly I'm a cult member. Suddenly I'm crazy. I've been laughed at, mocked, hated and despised for doing nothing more than simply telling the truth. And we should draw great comfort from the scriptures that tell us in Luke 21 17 that you should be hated of all men. For my name's son. That's right. And in John 15 18, where it says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me. That's right, amen. Before it hated you. Brothers and sisters, don't be given over to this right. fear. You know, one of my many favorite verses in the Bible is Philippians 4 13. Please, please turn there. I'd like to share it with you. It's been with me throughout my entire life as a Christian. And I'd especially recommend this verse to the younger people in this uh, church here. Philippians 4 13. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen it. Notice how it's not some things, a few things, it's all things. Isn't that just wonderfully encouraging to us? We can do all things through Christ which strengthen it. So brothers and sisters, please do not be afraid. Be strong and of good courage. Constantly be working for the Lord. Amen. Leave out tracks Amen. and leaflets at your workplace, at the school, at the shops, anywhere and everywhere, as often as you can. Amen. Get some Bible verses. Uh, back in the UK, I've got Bible verses on the back of my car. Get some Bible verses on your car, on your, on your backpack, uh, on, your, on, your, on the wall of your house, so that people are always seeing the Word of God in front of them. Carry your Bible around with you everywhere. Amen. Take a lunch break and take your Bible out and read it in front of me. Amen. Amen. Right. Make Jesus Christ and being crucified the subject of daily conversation. Amen. Especially with the other side. Talk to people about Jesus Christ. Right. Tell people that you're a Christian. Amen. You know, some people may not even know you're a Christian. This was true for me a few years ago. People didn't know I was a Christian. Tell them that you come to church. Tell them that you go to a Bible study or a prayer meeting. You know, someone says, No, I don't know what you're coming up for. No, I can't make this. You go to a Bible study. What's the Bible study? Right. In the conversation. Let them think about what you're doing. Right. Have that indirect knowledge. 